Welcome back. We're going to do the outside of uh, unit 1829. So we're going to talk keys here. First thing we want to do here, on this door handle, you see this black handle key, and it shows you which way to put the key. So it will be upright like this. You basically put the key in there, and you lock and unlock the door. And then this other key here does the deadbolt, and it goes in the same way, and it locks and unlocks the deadbolt. That's how that one works, okay? You have several other keys. This key here does the driver and the passenger door as well as the ignition to start the truck. This key that says 751 on it, this key unlocks the majority of these compartments all around the motorhome. When you do go to unlock these compartments, always push in. So before you would do one of these keys, you want to push in a little bit, put the key in, push it in, and then lock it, unlock it. And the reason for that is because this little catch just hooks right behind this little lip here. And people break these keys off all the time. You have to push this back so it clears that, and then it'll work just fine when you do that. Okay. And this other key here does the door to the power cord on the opposite side of the RV, and I'll show you that. Okay. So those are the keys. This step basically works like this. You just lift up, push it in place, and it'll stay there. It won't come out there. Okay, that's how this step works. We're not gonna do the awning at this time right now because it's pretty windy today and we don't wanna damage the awning. Just a word of caution to you as well. If you have a windy day like this, you don't wanna open up the awning either, okay? Because it will get damaged. All right, right along here. We've already checked all the fuel, the fluids, the tires, all that's been done. We have a multi-point inspection that we do on all the RVs before they go out. But let me show you a few things in here before we move a little further. Um, in here, on the opposite side, and the gentleman's going to show you, you've got the emergency start. If you needed to jump the battery, the auxiliary battery will jump the main starting battery. And the other button is for the generator. You can start the generator from right there, or you can start it at that monitor panel inside the coach that I showed you when we first began this tour. That's what those are for. Okay. Over here is your generator. And as a couple things about the generator you need to know about. Inside of here, there's a breaker that I need to show you. So basically, you turn these two levers like this where it says open, you pull it towards you, and you lift it right up and out of there. And right down here, where my finger is, that is the breaker switch for the generator. If that is back like that, that means it's been tripped and you're not gonna get any electricity inside the coach even when this thing is running. So basically what you do, you have to flip it forward and that resets the breaker, okay? And then this is where you would check the oil and then this is where you would start or stop the generator outside if you had to. But you have two other places already. So you have a total of three places, monitor panel, dashboard and then out here you can do the same thing okay and to put this cover back in place what you want to do the first thing you do is you put the bottom in and you fit it right on that little lip there you push it forward you turn it you lock it and you pull on it to make sure she's in there good and tight okay that's how the generator works the generator uses just straight well the generator uses 1540 oil if you need to buy some more oil or you can always use just straight 30 weight if you're in a pinch. You can work on both. On the end here, you've got storage compartments there. So what we're going to talk about now is how to hook up your water hose when you're at a campground for the city connection. This end of the hose will go onto the faucet at the campsite or at your house. And this other end of the hose will come down here and it will screw right into here. So when you have this hose connected like this, you have forced water as if you're at home. You won't need to use the water pump or your auxiliary water tank on board, okay? Put this back. This is the back side of the refrigerator where we just go in and do maintenance. There's really nothing for you to do. And then you've got this handheld outside shower with hot and cold water. You're at the beach or whatever, you can rinse off sand or whatever you need to do. Down here, is where we are going to talk about dumping your waste. If 
you haven't paid any attention to anything I'm telling you, this part you better pay attention to, because if you get this right, if you get it wrong rather, you won't ever do this again. You won't ever make this mistake again. So basically what you do is, you take this little black cap off, you unscrew the black cap, you come under here with your sewer hose, you connect it, you twist it, and you make sure she's on there good and tight, and the other end of your hose will be down in the ground at your campsite. So you have to thread it, so you just thread this in there, lock it in, make sure she's in there good, and then what you want to do is, you come over here, and you got two valves. You got this really large one, and then you got this really small one. This really large one here is a black handle. I don't know if you can see that, but one's black and one's gray. But they may not always be color coded that way. So remember it this way. Remember the biggest one and the smaller one. So you got your hose in place and it's secure. You pull this valve straight out. And that's gonna dump the sewage, the toilet waste. It's gonna dump that out through the hose. Once it's done, you shake your hose a little bit and you push that side back in. And then you come over here to the smaller one and you pull that one out. Just pull it straight out. You don't need to turn it, just pull it straight out. Now what that's gonna do, that is gonna drain the water from your sink and the shower water. All of that water is gonna run through the hose and it's gonna rinse out all the toilet waste. You must do it in this order. If you don't do it in this order, you'll regret not doing it in that order, I promise you. But anyway, and once it's done, you shake your hose once again and, let, and then after you're done, you close that side and then you pick your hose up like I'm doing here and you snake it down, sending everything down the drain before you disconnect it from there, okay? You make sure it's nice and clean and clear before you disconnect it. And at that point, then you take, you unscrew your hose and you take it away and then you recap it, okay? That's basically how you're gonna be dumping your waste. Now I'm gonna tell you, if you're gonna stay somewhere for an extended period of time and your buddy or someone told you that you should leave these valves open because you got this hooked up, that's a bad idea. The gray water, the sink and the shower water is going to run just fine down through the tank and out this hose. But the solid waste from the black tank will not do that. So you need to leave this valve closed, let that pressure build up, so let it go for a day, a day and a half, and then come outside and dump it like I showed you. But do not leave this open just because you're hooked up to a sewage. It doesn't work that way you're going to have a mess on your hands. All right. Over here, we talked about that. You got your city connection. You have a cable TV hook up there, possibly, if they have cable. And we don't provide coax cable. Inside of here is your power cord. This cord is 30 amps. It's 25 feet long. And if you can't remember that I told you it's 30 amps, all you have to do is look on this door, and it tells you 30 amps right there. Okay, so what you want to do is, you pull this out, you plug it into a 30 amp outlet. 30 amps is a three prong. Now with this motorhome, when you're about to depart from where you are, you unplug this cord from your 30 amp plug, and inside of this box here, inside this compartment, you see a big metal box. This cord must stay plugged into something at all times. You're either going to have it plugged into that box or at the campground. So what happens is when you plug this back into that box and you start up the generator, the generator sends all the power to that box. And then in turn, it gets sent inside the coach. If your cord is not plugged into that box, you are never gonna get any electricity inside the RV, even with the generator running, okay? All right. Over here is where you fill up your fuel. It uses regular unleaded, um, and it holds about 45 gallons of fuel. Okay, make my lid and just fill up from the rear. Over here, you've got your fresh water fill. That um, little deal right there is where you fill up your fresh water tank. So you take your same hose that we talked about, stretch it across here, you stick the water hose directly into that hole, and you start filling up your tank. That's probably about 35, 40 gallons of water. Once it's full, water is going to start shooting out this little hole on the side here. And that's to indicate that it's full. Also, you can look inside on your monitor panel and push the button that says fresh, and it'll show you how many lights. It'll show you it's either empty or full. It'll also show you that inside. Once you're done refilling it, you recap this hose. You recap this there. 
Now you've just filled up your fresh water tank there. Okay. Inside here is your rear compartment, your storage compartment. Inside there you will notice you've got a spare tire and you've got your awning rod. And I'll have to show you later on how this awning works. Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you that the winds died down a little bit. So we're going to take a chance. So the first thing you want to do on this awning is you want to make sure it's not a windy day. So you need to come down here and you need to pop that little black knob first. The way this works, squeeze and pop it. And then you unlock this black knob here. And then you reach up here with this long rod. That's where this comes into play. That uh, unlock that. And then we're gonna do the same thing on both ends. I'm gonna unlock this black knob. Squeeze that and pop that out. And then you come over here. Now this is another indication of why you shouldn't open the awning up today because you have to take this rod and hook into that little strap. If you can't get this into there, you probably shouldn't open this awning up. So I'm going to take heed and not try to open this awning up because I cannot even hook into this right now. So we'll have to do that when the winds calm down a little bit. All right. And that's pretty much it um, on the awning. Inside of here, you've got a compartment here where you've got a CD player with a radio and you have speakers here and then you have a 12 where you can plug in a cell phone or you can plug into electricity in there okay these little things here hold the compartments open if you have those on it and inside of here you just got another storage compartment this is the back side of the furnace and it says hot if it's on it will burn you our little kids will get their hands burned if that's gone and this is the back side of the hot water heater and it also says hot when it's on there's heat coming out of here so you don't want to put your hand on there either okay all right and then you've got your final area over here in this compartment here you got a little storage over the top and it's a pass-through compartment you can put fishing rods or something of that nature there and then you've got your propane we talked about propane propane smells like rotten eggs what you want to do is if for some reason you need to close this tank you turn it clockwise and that closes off the propane bottle but you leave it open because the propane needs to flow from this tank to the different things inside that's needed as you can see you've got a, uh, a gauge here that shows you how much propane you have and this RV is full of propane right now okay and like I said the propane works the stove the furnace the hot water heater and the fridge okay and that pretty much uh, covers the whole RV except for the audio I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I hope it was helpful for you thank you